Chapter 19 A Prophet of Peace This chapter is based on 2 Kings chapter 4. The work of Elisha as a prophet was, in some respects, very different from that of Elijah. To Elijah had been committed messages of condemnation and judgment. His was the voice of fearless reproof, calling king and people to turn from their evil ways. Elisha's was a more peaceful mission. His it was to build up and strengthen the work that Elijah had begun to teach the people the way of the Lord. Inspiration pictures him as coming into personal touch with the people, surrounded by the sons of the prophets, bringing, by his miracles and his ministry, healing and rejoicing. Elisha was a man of mild and kindly spirit, but that he could also be stern is shown by his course when, on the way to Bethel, he was mocked by ungodly youth who had come out of the city. These youth had heard of Elijah's ascension, and they made this solemn event the subject of their jeers, saying to Elisha, Go up, thou bald head! Go up, thou bald head! At the sound of their mocking words, the prophet turned back, and under the inspiration of the Almighty, he pronounced a curse upon them. The awful judgment that followed was of God. There came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tear forty and two of them. Second Kings 2, verses 23 and 24. Had Elisha allowed the mockery to pass unnoticed, he would have continued to be ridiculed and reviled by the rabble, and his mission to instruct and save in a time of grave national peril might have been defeated. This one instance of terrible severity was sufficient to command respect throughout his life. For fifty years he went in and out of the gate of Bethel, and to and fro in the land, from city to city, passing through crowds of idle, rude, dissolute youth, but none mocked him or made light of his qualifications as the prophet of the Most High. Even kindness should have its limits. Authority must be maintained by a firm severity, or it will be received by many with mockery and contempt. The so-called tenderness, the coaxing and indulgence used toward youth by parents and guardians, is one of the worst evils which can come upon them. In every family, firmness, decision, positive requirements are essential. Reverence, in which the youth who mocked Elisha were so lacking, is a grace that should be carefully cherished. Every child should be taught to show true reverence for God. Never should his name be spoken lightly or thoughtlessly. Angels, as they speak it, veil their faces. With what reverence should we, who are fallen and sinful, take it upon our lips? Reverence should be shown for God's representatives, for ministers, teachers, and parents who are called to speak and act in His stead. In the respect shown them, God is honored. Courtesy also is one of the graces of the Spirit and should be cultivated by all. It has power to soften natures which, without it, would grow hard and rough. Those who profess to be followers of Christ and are at the same time rough, unkind, and uncourteous, have not learned of Jesus. Their sincerity may not be doubted, their uprightness may not be questioned, but sincerity and uprightness will not atone for a lack of kindness and courtesy. The kindly spirit that enabled Elisha to exert a powerful influence over the lives of many in Israel is revealed in the story of his friendly relations with a family dwelling at Shunem. In his journeyings to and fro throughout the kingdom, it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, 
he turned in thither to eat bread. The mistress of the house perceived that Elisha was a holy man of God, and she said to her husband, Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. To this retreat Elisha often came, thankful for its quiet peace. Nor was God unmindful of the woman's kindness. Her home had been childless, and now the Lord rewarded her hospitality by the gift of a son. Years passed. The child was old enough to be out in the field with the reapers. One day he was stricken down by the heat, and he said unto his father, My head, my head. The father bade a lad carry the child to his mother, and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. In her distress, the Shunammite determined to go to Elisha for help. The prophet was then at Mount Carmel, and the woman, accompanied by her servant, set forth immediately. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? The servant did as he was bidden, but not till she had reached Elisha did the stricken mother reveal the cause of her sorrow. Upon hearing of her loss, Elisha bade Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. But the mother would not be satisfied till Elisha himself came with her. As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee, she declared. And he arose and followed her, and Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. When they reached the house, Elisha went into the room where the dead child lay, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up, and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned, and walked in the house to and fro, and went up, and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Calling Gehazi, Elisha bade him send the mother to him. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in, and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. So was the faith of this woman rewarded. Christ, the great life-giver, restored her son to her. In like manner will his faithful ones be rewarded when, at his coming, death loses its sting and the grave is robbed of the victory it has claimed. Then will he restore to his servants the children that have been taken from them by death. Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping, and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, 
that thy children shall come again to their own border. Jeremiah 31, verses 15 to 17. Jesus comforts our sorrow for the dead with a message of infinite hope. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Hosea 13, verse 14. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 1, verse 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. Like the Savior of mankind, of whom he was a type, Elisha, in his ministry among men, combined the work of healing with that of teaching. Faithfully, untiringly, throughout his long and effective labors, Elisha endeavored to foster and advance the important educational work carried on by the schools of the prophets. In the providence of God, his words of instruction to the earnest groups of young men assembled were confirmed by the deep movings of the Holy Spirit, and at times by other unmistakable evidences of his authority as a servant of Jehovah. It was on the occasion of one of his visits to the school established at Gilgal that he healed the poisoned pottage. There was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seethe pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, Pour out for the people, that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. At Gilgal also, while the dearth was still in the land, Elisha fed one hundred men with the present brought to him by a man from Baal Shalisha, bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. There were those with him who were sorely in need of food. When the offering came, he said to his servant, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Should I set this before a hundred men? He said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, They shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. What condescension it was on the part of Christ, through his messenger, to work this miracle to satisfy hunger! Again and again since that time, though not always in so marked and perceptible a manner, has the Lord Jesus worked to supply human need. If we had clearer spiritual discernment, we would recognize more readily than we do God's compassionate dealing with the children of men. It is the grace of God on the small portion that makes it all sufficient. God's hand can multiply it a hundredfold. From His resources, He can spread a table in the wilderness. By the touch of His hand, He can increase the scanty provision and make it sufficient for all. It was his power that increased the loaves and corn in the hands of the sons of the prophets. 
in the days of Christ's earthly ministry, when he performed a similar miracle in feeding the multitudes, the same unbelief was manifested as was shown by those associated with the prophet of old. What? said Elisha's servant. Should I set this before an hundred men? And when Jesus bade his disciples give the multitude to eat, they answered, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all this people. Luke 9, verse 13. What is that among so many? The lesson is for God's children in every age. When the Lord gives a work to be done, let not man stop to inquire into the reasonableness of the command or the probable result of their efforts to obey. The supply in their hands may seem to fall short of the need to be filled, but in the hands of the Lord it will prove more than sufficient. The servitor set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. A fuller sense of God's relationship to those whom he has purchased with the gift of his Son, a greater faith in the onward progress of his cause in the earth, this is the great need of the church today. Let none waste time in deploring the scantiness of their visible resources. The outward appearance may be unpromising, but energy and trust in God will develop resources. The gift brought to him with thanksgiving and with prayer for his blessing, he will multiply as he multiplied the food given to the sons of the prophets and to the weary multitude.